Hello everybody, welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. This is our Beast Tamer Bard build episode 161, I believe. Dear God. Yep, that's correct. Okay, um... <laughs> that wedding went, uh... Went real fucking bad. Um... So, we've got to rush back to Dresden now. To, um, to try to save a bunch of the wedding guests' souls. Fingers crossed? Question mark? I have um, a lot of nervous energy because I just got a new Dominion's turn that rolled uh, like an hour and a half ago. Um, and there's some pretty big stuff that's happened in it and I'm trying to mull over in my mind what exactly is... What is taking so long with this fucking load time? I'm gonna clip a fingernail without it shooting across into my face. How's it going, Lime? How are you doing? Okay, I was gonna be like, this thing is taking a really long time to load. Alright, what happened? Sila is standing with her weapon drawn, her eyes ablaze. Have you seen the bodies in the streets? I'd bet anything this is the doing of our jeweler. Let's go to his shop quickly if you're ready. Yeah, fuck it. Let's let's head on. Let's do it. Um, this is uh, this has been a fun quest line. Like, oh no, we're gonna have to fight that iron golem thing. What? Wasn't it just the wedding guests? Uh, yes, kind of. It was a lot of the wedding party. Right? Like, some of the wedding guests and a lot of the wedding party were, um, you know, they their souls were taken. Like, the the, the maid of honor and the, the best man were at least in there. So we've been poisoned with the condition Prismatic Surge Poison. Harms you every round, but usually works for about six rounds. Cool. Commander, Sila, praise Abadar, you're alive. The usually dignified Arsno struggles to catch her breath after running, and she says, nervously clenching her hands, I've received news from other temples of Abadar, most disturbing news. What we saw at Elan's and Kiana's wedding has been happening across Mindev. People who bought Derek Sunhammer's jewelry have been dropping to the ground, lifeless, with demons emerging from their bodies. This son of a bitch. Ah! The damage done is hard to measure. Demons appeared in a hundred locations, and many of them immediately used the turmoil to commit atrocities. Killing, stealing, wreaking, wreaking wanton destruction. That's interesting. So they could basically smuggle the demons out of the... out of the world wound through the gems. Yeah, this would be a crisis even without the war. Absolutely, right? Because, like, so... Life in Mindev is generally not, like, easy-peasy or anything like that. It's still medieval fantasy, you know, magic land. Um, but it's unaffected by the horrors of the world wound because of the ward stones, right, um, on the border between Mindev and the world wound. So, like, demons don't just get to wantonly cross and, and destroy things. So... Being able to smuggle the demons through in gemstones is a big fucking deal. Like, that's a really big deal. Um, okay, okay. Some were quickly dealt with, the cursed jewelry taken from them, and the imprisoned souls free. But most of the demons fled, taking the jewelry containing the souls of their poor victims with them. Derek Sunhammer himself escaped too. The Inquisition of the Church of Iomidae is searching for him. But they have no leads as yet. 
The Church of Abadar is doing whatever it can. We also suffered losses among both our congregation and our clergy. Arsenault shakes her head sadly. Such a devious plot, and how skillfully it was executed. As Arsenault speaks, Sila's face grows more and more grim, and her hands clench anxiously around her weapon. I saw that scumbag right here! I even talked to him! I didn't suspect a thing. I often get a sickening feeling from traitors. Some of them are nasty pieces of work, the way they rip people off. I got that same feeling from him, but I didn't even think to look closer. Well, fuck. So all his jewelry came with us, hidden surprise? Not all of it. The Inquisition combed through everything. Most of what was sold in Sunhammer's shops was perfectly ordinary. The demon jewelry was sold to a select few and always by Sunhammer directly, not through his golems. It is clear that he targeted his victims deliberately. Interesting. Okay, that's a little bit of a change. I was not expecting that. Okay. What will happen to the victims of this attack? Several large churches in Mindev have taken the victims into their care. The priests will keep their bodies alive and well, but unless the jewelry is found and their souls returned, all these efforts will be for naught. Okay, so they're basically just making this bigger than just this small contained situation, which I guess makes sense, right? Because, you know, if it was just a few members of the wedding party of, of you know, Elon and Kiana's wedding party, that would be a bummer if we failed to save them, but okay, you know, it's like five or six people. It's, again, a bummer. We don't want that to happen, but amping up the stakes here is, is a common tactic in games like this, but not... I, I mean, I get why they're doing it. Uh, what did Sunhammer want to achieve by doing this? It's not clear, but he's been the most famous jeweler in Mindev for several years now. He counted many influential personages or their relatives among his clients. Nobility, generals, priests, merchants. They, their children, or their loved ones are now only lifeless bodies, their souls taken away and hidden who knows where. The possibilities for blackmail and sow sowing blind panic are limitless. I suppose the Inquisition and the Mendevian authorities will try to keep the situation under control, but it is still extremely dangerous. How did anyone how did no one notice anything? Magic, Knight Commander, and highly sophisticated magic at that. The jewelry items were well protected, and no one detected the demons hiding in them. If we assume that Derek Sunhammer not only made the jewelry, but also charmed the items, we must conclude that he is an incredibly powerful and skilled spellcaster. Uh oh. <laughs> that sounds dangerous, I see. That is all I can tell you. I hope I've been helpful. If it's within your power, help track down Sunhammer and the Stolen Souls, Commander. This chaos must be stopped. Arsenault bows to you and leaves. Sila sheaths her weapon angrily and sucks in a breath through her teeth, but then she seems to steady herself and looks at you, her eyes bright. Well, what do you know? Looks like we got ourselves tangled up in some demonic conspiracy. I'm so glad you came to the wedding with me. And that we managed to find out what happened. Because otherwise, Sela the Dimwit would have come alone, given the bride a ring with a surprise demon inside, and would have failed miserably when she tried to help. Well, you know. Actually, yeah, number two. But you were the one who noticed something odd was happening, and you saved Kiana. At least I saved her, right? Good to know I'm not entirely useless. <laughs> Aw, Sila's really, like, beating herself up over this one. That's that's a bummer. Grim determination burns in Sila's eyes. I can't leave it like this. If anyone has an obligation to find that low-life sun hammer and return all the stolen souls, it's me. I'll do everything in my power to find him. Something tells me that the demon-collaborating scumbag is somewhere here in the whirlwind. I'll seek help from every quarter. I'll interrogate imprisoned demons and cultists. Whatever it takes to get to the truth. Alright, so I'm assuming this is going to be like a break in the, the quest line, right? Yay, permanent constitution damage. Whee! Um, yeah. So this is going to be a, a break in the, the quest line because I'm assuming this gets done in a later chapter, probably. 
Because this is like the continuation of, of Sela's quest. Yeah, Til, Til Death Do Us Part is completed. We will find a new version later on. Finian's Awakening. Let us talk to... Finian. Want to chat? I'm always up for a chin wag. Fuck Finian. We got ambushed by cultist who spoke of some bladesmith. I suppose, suspect you might know him. Finian's tone is grim. All too well. He was the one who tortured me. I don't know what specimens they wanted from you. Maybe they thought I had stolen something from them. Wait, I just remembered something. His voice turns hopeful. That bladesmith's workshop was just outside Iz, right by the walls. If, Gorum willing, we are ever in those parts, I'll beat the hell out of that scumbag for all he did to me. All right. Ha! Finding those cultists was a stroke of luck. I'm ready to leap into battle right now. Just say the word. It's like I can feel this newfound strength. I bet Finian upgrades after this. When you go to Iz, make sure to bring me along. Wait for an opportune moment. I... Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. Holy shit. Strength, brilliant energy, and heart seeker? Hold up. Can we turn this into a scythe? The one thing, like, he can't get turned into. Actually, it looks like he only turns into, um... Simple weapons, not martial weapons. Which is unfortunate. Uh ah, uh, no, he turns into whatever you have proficiency with, I I bet, the character that you're sitting on. Brilliant energy, heart seeker, and enchantment enhancement plus three. So all we have is enhancement plus four here. What is what are those properties? Brilliant energy, heart seeker, and enchant enhancement plus three. Brilliant Energy Weapon ignores non-living matter. Armor and shield bonuses to AC, including an enhancement bonus to that armor, do not count against it because the weapon passes through armor. Dexterity, deflection, dodge, natural armor, and other such bonuses still apply. A brilliant energy weapon cannot harm undead, constructs, or objects. Okay. A heart seeker weapon ignores the mischance for concealment against most living targets, though the attack must still target the proper square. This special ability does not apply against aberrations, oozes, plants, outsiders with the elemental subtype, or any creature specifically noted to lack a heart. Ah, uh, wow. Does an additional 1d6 force damage. Um, that's... kind of crazy. Hmm. Hmm. ay 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 21, 20, 36, 42, 35, 41. Um... Here's the thing, most of the enemies that we fight are not undead or constructs, so ignoring their armor is probably going to be a massive fucking boon to Sila. We're going to try this out for a little bit. I have a sneaking suspicion that this is going to be stupendously OP on the right people. Or against the right targets, basically. Um, wow. Wow. That's that's kind of crazy. I did a fair bit of reading about character classes last weekend. Considering that you just got hit with constitution damage, I don't know how important it is to prioritize learning to spell debuff. Magic is for a cleric or witch. Yeah, so we have um, on... Doo -doo 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 -doo, on both, I believe... Um, Sociel and... 
Dayrin, I believe, both have access to um, Restoration and Lesser Restoration, which can remove um, uh, Ability Score damage. But then also, I believe, Nenio and Ember both have Break Enchantment, which I believe can, can do the same thing. Not always, but I believe it can do the same thing. So yeah, we should be good. Hopefully. At this point, I think um, ability score damage tends to be more of a hmm. um, resource annoyance. Do we have anyone else? Did Sila actually get hit with that too? Oh, um, Nenio has Demon Plague. Which we need to uh, get rid of. Tila did not get hit. So. Okay. We should be able to take care of that without any real issues. Um, ooh, I wanted to... That's another thing to make sure that I have. Um, so when we first started the game so many moons ago, uh, they had... Um, let's sort by type. You could just use the, the, the medicine or the heal action on an ally to try to remove a, um, a plague or a disease or something like that. But now you actually need to have a healing kit. Um, which I don't know if we actually have any of them on us at the moment, so. We might need to make sure that we stop and grab some. Um, okay. Let us... Beautiful. There's not a damn thing in here. Of course. Why am I surprised? All right, that was a neat quest though. Like that was honestly, that was kind of fun. And my load times are wickety bad right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go over here. Oh, hold up. See if uh, the one-eyed devil has anything. Plus ten. Eesh. Here we go. My goodness gracious. Uh, uh, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to try to go see if any of these places have healer's kits. Or whatever the appropriately named thing is. I don't remember. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't assume that the blacksmith is going to have what we're looking for, but who knows? Such a flaw. Interesting. All of the ocean. Summon a large water elemental once per day as a 11th level druid. Interesting. Half plate of will. What you have? Quiver of Sacred Vengeance. Gives an additional 1d6 holy damage. That's nice, but I don't know that that's 38,000 nice. Actually, don't. I mean, I say I don't make a lot of money, but I I hold on to a 
stupid amount of items that I'm not using at all. It's, I will say this, it's mostly just because I don't want to sit here and do that all on camera. I probably need to, like, roll up the game one weekend and be like, okay, we're going to do, we're going to get rid of all this crap, right? Um, but the likelihood of me doing that is relatively low. It's more likely that I will just eventually do it on camera one of these days. I'm assuming, actually, we can probably buy what we're looking for from Arsenal. Plus five resistance bonus against demons. Wow. Roll of the soul. Diamond, some scrolls of blasphemy. Bunch of other random stuff. Goggles of pure sight. Can't make the demons wait. Arsenal's over there. Should be easy peasy. I assume that she has what we're looking for, but if she does not, honestly, I will live without. I think we can magic our way through all of the stuff that I'm thinking of right now, so. Is there any news about the poor folk whose souls were stolen? No, but believe me, I'm not going to leave this alone. This is a serious crime, one that happened right under my nose. I consider it a personal insult and am willing to help Elon and everyone involved. Every day I spend some time trying to find the stolen souls with prayers and divine magic. My search has brought no results yet, but as soon as it does, I will let you know. Wonderful. First aid kit, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, why not? Easy peasy. Um, yeah, I think I actually might just buy all of those dinosaur bones as well. Buy that recipe. 100,000. We're not doing that. Um... We have... Oof, so expensive. I would like to buy these. But... It's a little pricey for my blood at the moment. 42,000? 27,000? Yikes. Forty two thousand. Yeah, I think that's too much. Moment. And we have it, and we could definitely get it. We could definitely replace it, but I don't know. Really seem worthwhile. Not doing enough of that scenario. Bloodstained letter. Where's my croissant? Glowing croissant! You have to... I already know this recipe. Oh, well. Wasted that money. Oh, well. Shit happens. It was a very cheap recipe, regardless, so. I guess we could just drop it so it's not in our inventory, but I don't think it really matters too terribly much. Alright, let's take a look at our well, let's just go to the let's just go to the 
world map. I think we're happy with the party that we have. Respec Arushale to Lumbers. All right. What are we doing? Outcast can't do that. Secrets of Creation, we can't do that yet. Dragon's Fate. We've been looking around, haven't found whatever it is we're looking for. Know Thy Enemy, that's Ivory Sanctum. That is definitely up on the, the block. Uh, identify the, or find the identity of the half-elf, mad half-elf woman. Um, we have tried and tried. We have found nothing on that. More than nothing, that is the Ninio quest, and I think we have done all we can do with it right now. Finian's Awakening, um, somewhere near is. We don't have the ability to go there yet, so probably not this chapter, or at least not right now. Middle game, maximize all Crusade stats. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess we're working on that, but... Uh, restoring the gold, broken gold buckle. Uh, we need five vials of magic essence. And in pursuit of the past, um, five vials of magic essence. I think those are um, specific. See, we have magic essence. But I don't know if this is a vial. I, uh, uh. The vile, vile. All right, we have Ivory Sanctum is over here. Um, we do have this little spot way the fuck over here that we could potentially go pick up. We might do that. Winter Sun, Heart of Mystery, Curse of the Riddle, Legacy of the Ancients. So those are all the puzzles. Two days and ten hours versus two days and two hours, actually. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm into the, this. Is just gonna be reagents, and I don't really care. Uh, I think we we just head to Ivory Sanctum. That being said, uh, we have done and there. You guys are heading down to the Hell Knights to reinforce. No marksmen. They're not bad. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of whether or not I want to just shift around components. Like take the bar, the barbarians, for example, seem relatively strong. At least they hit hard. They're not very strong, actually. They die very quickly. Hey, yay, yay! I don't know. I think I'm kind of stuck as it is. I need to probably upgrade Dresden more. I just haven't really... The... Hmm. I'm trying to say this in a... In a... Nice way. The building portions of this game are a little clunky, a little boring. Right? Um, so... Not super interested, unfortunately. Monument. We have a warehouse. We already had a monument. No, Monument's relatively new. All units with a 5% bonus to the chance to act twice due to positive combat morale.
Training grounds, 10% bonus damage. That being pretty useful. Um, part of the reason why I'm really looking to try to build more stuff is because you get uh, logistics out of building. And logistics is actually my lowest thing right now. So um, I think I that means I need to build more, basically. <laughs> uh, we're very close on upping diplomacy and military, so... I'm gonna go around and see. I think I'm mostly capped on what I can build. But I'm gonna go campaign, map, supply center. Surely we can we can make like an inn or something. Right? We cannot. We do not have enough material points. Do we have the ability to buy some material points? We need 180. Okay, so. We need 180, 120, no, 113. Right? Let's do it. Salutations. How's it going, Jay? In here. Ins increase our ability. We need something that increases our ability to produce more material points is what we need. Like, I guess that's supply centers, but supply centers only producing three is kind of fucking brutal, honestly. How's your day going? Also, how's Rachel doing? Um, okay, I think we actually should be good to start heading that way. Right, new stuff at the branch of the last ash. The knights have returned with the branch of the last ash. Okay. Ooh. Do we want a bardish or bardish? Or do we want a heavy pick? Pick might be cool for, um, I can never remember his freaking name. Uh, because it's not Greymore, not Greymane. It's, uh, Greybor. Greybor? Greybor? Greybor. The pick might be neat for Greybor. I think, I think Greybor has dwarven axes, right? It's kind of like a exotic weapon, but I also think he has picks. Um, so that could be neat. Take a heavy pick. Commander servants have carried out the decree. Alternatively, the Bardish could have been interesting to do on Sociol, but it's fine. Vagrants! All right, a crowd of the destitute, the sick, and the feeble-minded has arrived in Dresden, and they are asking to be admitted. Their lives are rough, they have no place where they belong, and they wish to die as heroes at the very least. But the Crusaders do not wish to fight side by side with these vagrants either. Well... A hundred conscripts. Conscripts are not great. Um, and morale reduces by 10. Um, work on the home front. Material points increase by 1. And crusade morale reduces by 20. Why? 
That's even worse than... <laughs> they hate that more than fighting for them? Send them to Mendev. This is a decision without consequences. Or set up a hospital. Material point income increases by one and Crusader Mount. So I, I honestly see no reason why we wouldn't just do this. We get a material point increase and we get morale and fucking sure, set up a hospital. Originally set up a hospital for the poor souls in Dresden. The healers care for the sick and they help the help the supply units in gratitude. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Plus one material point. Could that not have been plus ten? Do you think plus ten would have busted the game? Game? Like, I need more material points, yo. Decrees, preachers. Uh, yeah, I think we're probably fine to just go ahead and do that one. Finance points. Yeah, screw it. That. Also. All oh, right. Three Yama Azadas. You actually look at them? No, we just got them. Okay, these are crazy units. Mythic, flight, spellcasting, 171 HP. That's really high. AC 20 is pretty good. Resistances, immunities... Uh, cold Iron Star Knife, plus 18. Not super high damage. Not intended to be a melee unit, looks like. Dispel, Pure Moderate Wounds, Flight. Um, can potentially fly to the back and assassinate some people, I suppose. Um, this seems really cool, but also seems like three of them is going to just die, right? I mean, yeah, e even at 171 HP, they're just that's just going to die. So... I DK on that one. Alright, fuck it. Continue! Um, we're going to go ahead and save and then push our luck. Evade. Stealth check succeeded. Stealth check of plus 33. Holy shit. Okay, we will go ahead and... Um, and we will... Take that's it. Uh, back. What do I have to do to oh I uh, click it? That's that did not work. I have to hit OK. Alright, I don't wanna craft it because we're not gonna anything with it right now. You thought of something? Does your alignment affect the mythi mythic path you can take? Azadas sound like they're chaotic good, although it sounds like you have to be lawful to pick Angel. Um, to my understanding, um, yes and no, right? So, um, 
how do I how do I phrase this? You are I think you are likely to get certain options. Not likely. Your alignment. Um, well, no, I, th I think you're likely to get certain options based on your alignment. But I don't know if I don't I don't know if there's any like lock, right? On once you go into a path, you stop seeing certain options. For example, right? Um, prior to taking Azada, I obviously had all sorts of... I could take evil actions, I could take chaotic actions, I could take good actions, lawful actions, neutral actions, whatever, right? My assumption was going to be that after I picked Azada, I would stop seeing some of the options, but that has not been the case. Um, it, it seems as if when you pick your mythic path, all of the general storyline stuff, all of those types of options, you can still pick good, evil, lawful, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can kind of just roleplay your character however you want them to play. But the situations that you get forced into by the mythic paths, a la like the actual Azada things, are skewed towards chaotic goodness. Which, And I'm assuming the demonic or the... You know, the lich mythic path stuff. Those are skewed towards evil things, right? So, um, I, I think you can mostly roleplay however you want. But depending on the path that you take, the game starts to bend closer around that path. That was a long-winded answer. It's a long-winded night. <laughs> it's been a long-winded couple of days, actually. Got a switchback going on. Whoop! Got a thing. All right, what do we have? The arrival of the Order of the Flaming Lance. Reinforcements of Crusaders from the Order of the Flaming Lance have arrived in Dresden. Their leader, Young Claim, was a is awaiting a count an audience with the commander. My God, I cannot speak words. Fear of the surface. Oh no, more Mongol stuff. A group of mongrels have arrived in Dresden. The hunters may have been brave in their underground caves, but they have lost their nerve on the surface. Of course they have. They are scared of sunlight, get disoriented by open spaces, and feel perturbed by unfamiliar opponents. Lan asks the commander to be understanding regarding his comrades' anxiety, and not to throw them straight into the thick of things. Um, so we... Oh... This option is unavailable because the Mongols did not see the light of heaven in the shield maze or because you did not choose the path of the angel because we didn't choose the path of the angel um, or did not take demonic sadness, path of the demon. We didn't do either of those. So, very interesting. Uh, position them in the rear of the army where it is safer. We get 50 Mongol syrup suitors are recruited. That's honestly probably pretty good from a mechanical standpoint. Uh, or 50 mongrel fighters, agile and bloodthirsty melee warriors recruited at the commander's headquarters. And axe plus two. Lust for battle. An additional attack. Interesting. Um, we're probably just going to take the sharpshooters because we already have a group of sharpshooters. So adding 50 to them is going to be pretty nice. The commander's decision raised the mongrel spirits. Once they learned that they would not have to charge into battle in the front ranks, the underground crusaders began to accustom themselves to their unfamiliar surroundings. Yeah, easy peasy. Enchanting the branch of the last ash. Yes, that's going to be cool when we get there. Um, all right. We did immediately get them. So that's a nice increase. Going from 81 to 131 is going to be pretty sick, actually. Pretty, pretty good. 
In point of fact, the amount that we have here in um, the Hell Knights is starting to weigh so heavily that it is counted as a eight. Eight um, strength army when the leader is only level six versus uh, a level 12 army. So, kind of an interesting situation. Again, I think I should probably just take some of these fucking units from the Hell Knights. The problem is, is I think the majority of the units that are pushing this over the thing are the Rangers and the Mongrel Sharpshooters and the Barbarians. And they just really die. Actually, it's probably the Hell Knights. The Hell Knights are actually pretty okay. Alright, anyways. We worry not. We continue. Continue? Yes. No, 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 no. Don't, don't. We're, we're going all the way there. And then we're gonna rest. Evade. Her stealth is absurd. Like, numbers don't matter to her. Okay. We're gonna save, and we are going to rest. And now we actually do want our mold wine, I think. Fast healing. Fast healing one for a day. Sila's favorite dish is a blazing parfait. The fuck? Aw, monster casserole is Windowog's favorite dish. We killed her. That's uh, we also killed Camellia. <gasps> it hurts. It hurts us, precious. One point five temporary HP per level is not. That's not nothing. Plus one to all saving throws, also not nothing. We're gonna go with mold wine. I've wanted to comb your hair for so long, but I'm afraid I might hurt you. Can you do a braid? If you know how, I'll endure it. Aww. Aww. It's best girl Ember. Okay, um, let's... Ah, shit. Did I... I, I did all my spellbook stuff last time. Pretty positive. Alright. Um, okay, I think, I think this is it. I think we're heading into the Ivory Sanctum, but I think we are probably going to do that on the next video. So, if you're watching on Twitch, stick around. We're gonna keep playing. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next time for more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash thedistanthorizon.